So Rusty made a video ranking all 308 weapons. A lot of you wanted me to review the tier list, but 308 weapons is a lot and would be much too large of a video for me to do if I did it all in one go. So over the next however long it takes, I'll be breaking down his video class by class and fixing it and giving you an objective tier list in both PvE and PvP. Additionally, for PvP, I will have several top tiers give their thoughts on it before I finalize the tier list. If you want me to review a certain class next, please leave it down in the comments and I will get to it as soon as I can. Obviously, with the DLC coming up, it's going to take a little bit of time for me to get through all of the classes as there is a lot of weapons. And since I have to formulize and test everything by hand, such as DPS, status damage per second, poise damage per second, it does take a long time and it's a lot of effort. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. And if you have any additional questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section and I'll get to it as soon as possible. Everything was ranked with all kinds of different criteria in mind, how fun the movesets are, how effective they are against however many types of enemies, damage, range, consistency, just about everything down to how they look artistically. All weapons were ranked with all different kinds of criteria in mind, how fun the movesets and animations are. So like already that, like in my mind, worst to best means like you're trying to be objective. Like bro, the Cestus and F tier, that's crazy. Anyways, that's just F tier. Like, Cestus is not, like, Cestus are good. They're very good. I did a no-hit run with the Spike Cestus, which are basically the same. The bleed doesn't really come into effect because the bosses die way too quickly. Because they do so much damage. Oh, yeah, and, uh, of course, Alabaster Lord Sword here is, that's crazy, man. <laughs> and D tier. Alabaster Lord Sword is one, it's maybe the, it's like top five Charger 2 weapon in the game, probably. Hoslo's pedal whip in S tier. <laughs> I did a run with this thing and it was it was basically trash, man. Like even even for a bleed build, it's not good. The best whip for sure is the Arumi. Which I didn't see where that was, but let's see where the Arumi is. 106 in B tier. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This almost does seem like if you just put every weapon into a randomizer and then shuffled it, like this is what you'd get, <laughs> basically. And then just put it in in order that the randomizer came out at. Is, yeah, Darkman Greatsword 51. This this could easily be argued for number one. In today's video, we will be breaking down the claws. Now I know it's not the most exciting class, and it's not really a big class. But surprisingly, claws offer very high damage per second. And unlike fists, which primarily go into the poise damage per second, claws offer pure damage per second with status, as well as just straight up damage per second. The best claw on a rune level 125 build can beat out Scavenger's Curve Sword when you're factoring in status. Additionally, Venomous Fang can out DPS any weapon, pretty much regardless of build, assuming you're not going to factor status. Claws are very slept on, so I'm going to be ranking down and ranking the best claws. Number 87, the Hook Claws. The Hook Claws are a subclass of fist weapon known as Claws, which are essentially fists, but much more capable. The fact that they're technically Claws means they can offer an 8 bleed buildup with a noticeable reach advantage you normally don't get from fists. It's also a really easy weapon to buff because the sheer quantity attacks being thrown out over a given time means the flat damage bonuses on grease items can be abused to a pretty absurd extent. You can go the occult route if you really want people to hate you in PvP, but that also tends to sacrifice a lot of upfront damage damage you tend to get from physical scaling. Number 81, the Venomous Fang. There are four weapon subclasses that all come with innate passive status buildup. Scythes, Katanas, Flails, and Claws. And without fail, there is always at least one black sheep who wakes up one day and makes it his mission to just fuck that up. And for the Claw family, it's the Venomous Fangs. Normally, I wouldn't favor poison too much at any point in the game that isn't the first couple hours, but a passive 72 buildup on anything is a pretty solid perk. The stat requirements are so low, there's almost no reason for them to even be there, and 
no matter what your physical stats are, the Venomous Fangs somehow always stay 20 to 30 AR above the rest of the Claw roster. Number 36, the Bloodhound Claws. Incredibly light, goes through shields and armor, comes with a stupidly powerful ash as a default, and the highest base damage of any other Claw. If you complain about the reach on this weapon compared to other Claws, then congratulations, you're officially hard to please. Number 3, the Raptor Talons. The advancing R2s are all I need to rank these Claws among the best in their class. I can complain about range as much as I want, and there's going to be an entire subpopulation of finger pointers in the community reminding me how much distance the heavies close. And I would have deserved it, because they're right. They earn A scalings in both heavy and keen affinities, making them extremely flexible regardless of what build you're investing in, and the charged heavy has a backflip in it. <clears throat> the charged heavy has a backflip in it. I, I just want to make sure you understand the gravity of what I'm saying. But only when you power stance them does the true strength of these claws cut through. The heavy attack combo is terrifyingly quick. It works wonders in PvP because the heavy combo is also a true combo against other players. Add in 60 passive bleed per strike and you've got yourself one of the most overlooked, albeit horrifyingly destructive weapons you'll ever pick up. Okay, so now I want to go over the PvE DPS and then we'll roll into the PvE tier list. So first up, a very important thing to note, the two-hand R1 is going to be the most optimal attack for a DPS. It's going to have a poise damage per second of 13.1, and if you use Craig Blade, that's going to bump it up to 14.411 poise damage per second. So that's pretty good right off the bat. Rinse off the Heavy Venomous Fang, which has a flat damage per second of 1,206. Now, if you include status from poison, keep in mind that the poison that Venomous Fang has is actually deadly poison, as some people like to call it, meaning it does more damage over a less period of time. It's going to equate to 17 damage per second that you're gaining from status. So, in total, you're looking at 1,223. That's very high, however, since we're including status, you got to include bleed for the other weapons too, which means that it actually doesn't equate to being that high compared to the bleed weapons. Now if you add Craig Blade, you're going to get 1387 regular damage per second. Obviously you add the poison onto that, it's going to go up to 1404. Again, very high, but with factoring in bleed on the other weapons, especially other claws, it's not going to be as high. That being said, and I did point this out in the intro, on a elemental affinity or a build where status doesn't matter, heavy, the Venomous Fang is going to be one of the best, highest DPS weapons you can have. Now the star of the show when factoring status is going to be the Cult Bloodhound Claws. They're going to have 1,077 DPS when not factoring status. However, when you factor status, they gain a whopping 348 DPS just from status. Which, if you remember my arcane weapons dump, maybe you don't. And stuff like Scavenger's Curve Swords, the status you gain isn't really that high. So, the base DPS is higher for something like Scavengers, but with the Cult Bloodhound Claws, for example, or any claw that has bleed on it, the total DPS is still going to be higher just because they gain that much more from status. This is a very niche case where status actually does play an important role in ranking DPS, and that's going to end up with 1,425 total DPS. If you had Craig Blade and Factor Status, you can get 1,587, which is the highest DPS that I have personally tested in game. And that is, in fact, higher than the Scavenger's Curve Sword with Craig Blade and using the jump attacks. So, if you only care about DPS, you should change your Scavenger's build to an Occult Bloodhound Claws. And the best part is, they use basically the same build. You're going to want 15 dexterity for the weapon requirements and then push the rest into arcane. Then we have the occult hook claws. These are going to be basically just a little bit worse version of bloodhound claws. They're a little bit longer range, but they have lower DPS. They have 1031 DPS, one factoring status, 358 DPS from status, so total is 
1389. It does have a little bit more DPS from status, but because the base DPS is lower, obviously it equates to being worse. And then with Craig Blade, the base DPS is 1186 for a total of 1544 when factoring status. And then we have the Raptor Talons. What Rusty claims is the Paragon of the Cloth family is actually the worst for PvE. You see, as a base DPS of 993, so it doesn't even break that 1000 mark, it has a lower status build up than Hook Claws being 355 for a total of 1348. And then if you factor in Craig Blade, that's going to be a total DPS of 1,497. And because someone asked me to on my Discord, I did also factor in the Keen Bloodhound Claws with Bloodhound Blade. However, I would like to point out that if you're going to do Bloodhound Claws, Heavy is actually better for damage. That being said, the base damage for the Keen Bloodhound Claws with the base stat Blood from the Blade is 1,129. Prom status is 364, so it does get the highest status of the Claws. However, since the base damage is lower, it doesn't equate as much. And plus, since you're buffing it, you can't again buff it with Craig Blade. For a total of 1,494. That's still a good number, but obviously it just isn't as good as buffing with Craig Blade. I would like to add on though, if you do Blood Flame Blade, you can use Endure, and as you see further in the video, I do heavily recommend you use Endure over Craig Blade even though you are sacrificing some DPS. I also calculated the Heavy Attack DPS, and I calculated for the Base Claws with Bloodhound Claws, and that does include the Charged Attacks having Axe Talisman and the Spike Crack tier. So for the uncharged attacks, it's 841 DPS with a poise damage of 11.2 and for a total DPS of 1064. With the charged, you're going to do 942 with a poise damage of 16.8 and this does not include Craig Blade so it can get pushed further. For the total, DPS including status is 1,088, so obviously much worse than the two-hand R1 chain. And since Raptor's Talons does have a unique heavy attack, I did calculate that. <clears throat> I did not calculate the uncharged version because the uncharged version actually has the same frame data overall as the regular as the regular claws. So with the Raptor Talon. Raptor Talon's charge DPS of 794, it is obviously much worse, and worse overall. It does have higher poise damage per second though, being 17.2, but the total DPS, including status, is 945, so really not that good. Now to follow, to understand the following discussion better, note that claws are very short weapons, and even though I included Craig Blade in the DPS testing, you will probably want to use Endure as your Ash of War due to how short they are to actually maintain DPS. So Venomous Flang is the best claw when not factoring status, but it's also the shortest claw. Bloodhound Claw is the best claw when factoring status. When not optimizing status, it works best on the Heavy Affinity, and if you use Blood Flame Blade with it, you can also use Endure, meaning it does have the highest total DPS if you're using Endure. Hook Claws offer slightly higher bleed buildup on a cult than Bloodhound Claws for less damage. When not optimizing for status, it works best on the Keen Affinity, and it is the longest claw. However, that still means it's pretty short. Raptor Talons offers a unique heavy attack that when charged is worse than the standard charged attack. Charged heavy attack is outclassed in every way. When not optimizing for status, it works best on the Keen Affinity. So, now onto the tier list. I have Bloodhound Claws in S tier because they are the highest damage, highest DPS claw. Venomous Fang is in A tier right behind the Bloodhound Claws, and that is because it is the highest DPS claw when not factoring in status. I also have Hook Claws in A tier because they're the longest claw, 
and they do get a little bit more status DPS than the other two claws. However, I would probably put it in B or C tier if you don't care about range. And then, uh, and finally, in D tier, I have the Raptor Talons, just because they are outclassed in every way compared to the other claws. You basically should never use them. Alright, moving on to the PvP viability. Claws are fast weapons, and they are positioned in C tier. Their heavy attacks are all very fast, so much so that the two hand are two single handedly catapults claws into B plus tier. They synergize very, very well with Rot, Drosting, Grease. Raptor Talons have more range but lower damage than the other claws. It's one of the few weapons to get a true combo on its non Ashivor attacks. Since it scales well with Dexterity, you can use the Keen Affinity for optimal damage. This makes it a very good option for Dex builds who utilize Status or Bloodplane Blade significantly better than the other claws. Drusting Blood Grease can add up 98 bleed to the heavy true combo when is buffed. Hook Claws are the longest claw. That's all I really have to say about them, they simply exist. Venomous Fang is the shortest claw, however they get deadly poison, making them useful in high latency scenarios or against opponents you can pressure enough not to bolus. Bloodhound Claws are a higher damage version of Hook Claws with worse range. Then for the PvP tier list, in S tier we have the Raptor Talons, just because they have the true combo on the heavy attacks, meaning you can actually get good damage off with them. The rest of the claws are in A tier. I have the hook claws in top place in A tier just because it is the longest claw. Then the venomous fang following right behind it because it has deadly poison. And the bloodhound claw following right behind that because it has higher damage than the hook claws, but it then less range. If you wanted to use a claw, I would use the raptor talons. However, the other claws are fine. Obviously, they're all kind of grouped the same. They have 